This is the new style motor for the Beckett. Okay, it's an end frame. There's different type of frames. Some of the old ones had bigger frames. This is an old style motor. They're all 3450 RPMs. This one's a one seventh. Permanent split capacitor motor there. This one over here has got the old style marathon motor. Basically, there's just two screws. There's one screw there to hold the motor in, and there's another screw here. I'll take that apart and I'll show you what it's like. Alright, on the motor, you go with a 3 8 speedy wrench. Let me just back that right off, that screw. A little screw on this side. This would come right out. You would have your fan blade on there. If it was an AF, it'd be a different type of fan blade. And you have a motor to pump coupling. This is a Beckett. The Kylan ones are shorter. Basically, that just goes on there like that. Okay, and that goes in. <clears throat> now, you can see the plastic housing in there. On the AFG, you can see that plastic plastic housing. And you got the pump on this side with two screws on this side. You take these two screws right here out, and this pump would come right out. And there's the air band to adjust your air. Transformer. And how you get that back in is pretty simple. What I usually do is I open up this draw assembly here. I stick my hand in the top of the burner here. I try to get it lined up somewhere where I want to be and I spin that fan blade until it drops right in. You can feel it drop right in. There it goes. Drops right in. Couple of screws. Tighten it up like that. And we're good to go. Now obviously, you know, um, this is not hooked up to a, a boiler or a furnace. If your boiler or a furnace is full of soot um, and it's blocked, ain't nothing going to work right no matter what you do with the burner. So there's more to this than just working on the burner. Um, you got to take the whole system into consideration. The flow. If the boiler or furnace is blocked with soot, you have to go in there and physically remove that soot. Clean it out. Well, this system will not breathe. It won't work right. Nothing will work right. On this series, I'm just going over the operation, you know, step by step of the burner. All right, guys. I'm going to talk about the pump a little bit here. Well, this is a single stage pump. 3450 RPMs. 
no delayed oil valve. This is just a standard SunTech pump. Okay. You can see the rotation here. You've got an inlet here that comes in. Usually you put your firematic valve here. You got an also another inlet on the bottom here if you wanted to put the inlet on the bottom here with this plug. And then there's a bypass, which is a return line, which is another plug. So if you wanted to turn this thing into a two-pipe system, you could take this plug out here on the return. Okay? And you have to install up underneath here. There's a little Allen screw that you'd have to put in there. It's called a bypass plug. If you put this bypass plug in here, okay, and you take a pipe from here and you go back to your tank, you turn, turn this into, into a two-pipe system, which would be self-bleeding, okay? Oil would come in, and then it bypass, and it would go back to the return on the tank. Now, the way this one-pipe system is, um, it's not self-bleeding. You have to bleed the air out. If there's any air in the system, you'd have to bleed the air out through this little bleeder here on the bottom to get rid of the air. So that's the difference between a one and a two pipe system. Now you still got um, single stage pumps and you got two stage pumps. Single stage pump on a SunTech will pull probably like five to six inches of vacuum. Now on a two stage pump this, this housing here would be deeper, okay, and it'd probably pull somewhere between 8 and 10 inches of vacuum. Now, the only reason you'd need that is if you had a tank that was really far away, or you're really high up off the ground with the burner, um, you might need the vacuum to get the oil up there. So, I do have some two-stage pumps in the truck, some tech. This particular pump right here. Another thing, now this pump, on the inside of this pump is a strainer here. We we'll take these four bolts out, pop this off, and there's a strainer in here. So obviously you've got a filter at the tank that catches most of the muck. And then if anything gets past that, it gets caught inside this secondary filter here. Now this is a Webster pump. Um, they stopped making these, but these are, these are good pumps. They pump really good. You get a lot of flow through these pumps, but the only drawback to a Webster pump is um, there's no screen in here, secondary screen. So what happens a lot of times with these pumps are people run out of oil, they'll bleed their oil line out to get the oil to get the air out, and they won't get a good flow, a nice uh, red flow of oil. They'll shut that, that little bleeder port off, and boom, they put all kinds of muck right into the nozzle the end of the nozzle and the thing will sit up. Move some of the nozzles like that. Doing service. Let's see if I can show you some of the dirty. You can see some are dirty than others. See all the end got all dirty on that? This one was running cleaner, obviously. See the difference? But I have seen these, I mean black. See how that's all black? That thing would blow soot like crazy. Fill it right up. So with this type of pump, you know, you're not getting a good flow and you don't have a secondary screen, guess where your, all the oil is going to go? The muck. It's going to go on the end there on that, that end of the, where the nozzle is, and this thing's going to start blowing soot before we boil it up with black soot. you would be calling me to clean it out. Call for heat.